Hi and welcome to a tutorial video on how to install and get started with a LibreSoft project. So, um, this is our main website. Um, it should be scrolling down to uh, here and basically step by step following these instructions. Um, at the primary purpose of this particular uh, uh, video is to show you um, the uh, the actual process of uh, installing things. So we've in, we've we've assumed that you've got down uh, got uh, uh, through this uh, list and would like to actually um, install the software. So um, we run a Libra project, so um, uh, uh, Libra a project. So it has some specific things. Um, everything is done uh, publicly. There are no private discussions for te for technolo technology te for, for for technological um, uh, uh, technological discussions and so on. Um, this is for audit purposes so that uh, as part of the funding for, from NLNet. So you need to be comfortable with um, asking questions not directly of developers. It's critically important. You mustn't go sort of emailing the developers privately and expecting help. You should be directing your inquiries to the IRC channel, which is logs um, and the mailing list. Uh, um, I think all be happy for registering on the on the bug tracker and asking questions on the on on the individual bugs. Um, uh, the reason for that is that, um, as I said, everything is recorded um, for for audit purposes. Now, this is no in no way as intimidating as it sounds if you're not familiar with that. And the reason is because, to be honest, not many people actually look at it. But if you're expecting to do private research, private funded research this is not your project. Um, so this page goes through the sorts of things that you should need to know to interact with people through these collaboration resources. Um, I, I just I'll skim basically over these so that you can know things. It's the usual stuff. It's it's uh, um, uh, taken from uh, uh, you know a sort of 30 years of um, uh, of experience of people developing um, things in uh, on public mailing lists and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's very simple and very sparse um, and easy for a small team to manage. Um, so we use uh, Git, and I'll come on to that in a, in a, in a minute and show you some things there. Um, uh, it describes your hardware requirements. You want as much as most monster machine you can possibly get hold of. Um, the operating system, when dealing with um, uh, reproducibility, um, uh, it is key. But also there is the um, load that um, is placed on um, other developers, if you don't follow the uh, precise and exact um, uh, development environment that's used, you become a drain on the resources. If you're using, woo, I've got my favorite operating system, my like Mac, I can do everything under Mac, you thing. Um, we don't need the hassle. Um, it also, um, for ASICs, it is critically important that you have a reproducible build. You absolutely cannot have some random software installed which does something completely different on your personal choice of operating system. So consequently, I've standardized on Debian 10 and provided some uh, automated install scripts which allow you to uh, get that up to speed uh, quickly um, and with no fuss. And that's the primary purpose of this video is to go over that. So. Whatever you like, whatever favorite operating system you, 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 you prefer for development, bury your preferences. We've standardized on Debian 10. Um, 
so uh, rest of, at this point we're going to, to, to software prerequisites and so at this point I'll transfer over to um, a Sharoot environment that I've already run um, uh, 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 which, uh, um, uh, 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 which contains the automated scripts. So um, to save some time on this video I've already run the following script. Uh, it's the mcdebian, mcdebian Sharoot and you can find it um, at this location here and I'll show you here on the on a thing uh, this is it's this repository so this is git.librasoc.org um, on the dev n setup.git um, uh, uh, repository you can clone that with git clone um, uh, 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 git.librasoc.org slash git slash dev n setup.git um, and then we have a series of uh, scripts that you can run so first first one that you want to do is the dev n setup where is it? McDeb, McDeb Sharoot. And it takes a single argument of what the name of the Sharoot is that you want to be created. Um, so um, uh, uh, that, let's assume that's already done and that I've then inside that Sharoot recloned the repository. Okay, the dev and setup repository. All right. Um, and here you are. Um, your dot git slash config file should look like this. Okay, https git dot labor slash git slash dev right. um, setup git. Once you've done that, you can then um, uh, in, uh, use these scripts. Now, bear in mind this is root, so please check it for yourself. Don't just run it randomly. <laughs> All right, read the scripts line by line. Make sure that you are happy with. Uh, its contents, and uh, yet you you personally take responsibility for that. I don't want people coming towards. Oh, I ran the script and it caught the hack my machine. It's your responsibility to check it when you're running something like this. Okay, not ours. Um, so install HDL app requirements. Um, uh, so if the first one that you want to run is um, the uh, one which installs all of the uh, dependencies um, which are going to be needed. So let's just run that dot slash install HDL out reps and off it goes. Oh, um, uh, because I've already run it, uh, um, thing it's already indicating that everything is, is already uh, the, 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 the latest versions. Okay, brilliant. So um, now um, it, there are two options here. Um, uh, for next thing to actually install the development uh, repositories um, uh, uh, and things, um, HDL dev repos and HDL dev repos virtual dev env. That's entirely up to you. It's your choice as to which one you prefer to do. Um, via HDL dev repos. Um, so um, it, it, this is the main thing that it, it does: is it runs to uh, click git clones all of these repositories. Uh, for us, and then uh, performs an installation um, uh, uh, of each. So we're just going to do that. HDL dev repos. Um, if you prefer using virtual env, please feel free. Knock yourself out. Um, there is a corresponding script which does the same the same thing. So whilst we're leaving that to run, um, we will go over a few things here. Oh, it's done the Namigen one. There's a C from JFAG, and Ambutils cloned, open power in ISA one. Yeah, that's getting on with it. So let's leave that in the background thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there's uh, there's some other ones here for installing Yosis, Symbiosis, um, and things as well. We should probably run uh, the, the, the the Yosis one as well. As it is a it's an important one to run because without that we can't run the some of the um, other uh, tests. Um, the bug tracker. Now um, there's um, there's a monstrous number of of, of uh, bugs, bugs here for this thing um, for the first SOC. Um, for the, for the that was for the uh, R E floating point unit. Um, let's look at this one, the main source code. Um, 
Dum, 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 dum. So um, one of the important things about this one is is that we have um, uh, uh, we make sure that we maintain dependencies. So where is it? 303 or 383? I sometimes memorize these numbers. You know, get used to used to them. There we go. Complete first functional Power9 core. <laughs> Massive list. Um, uh, but there's a dependency tree. Uh, which you can see um, uh, and think. So uh, it, 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 it's important that we have this, you know, for, 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 for just managing things because it's such a such a huge uh, project. So, for example, the MMU function unit is needed here, um, which we're currently working on, and then it cross references to bugs that uh, um, uh, are relevant ones, uh, blocks uh, and depends on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now, 51 is the one that has a budget. So there's a uh, virtual memory management system. There's 5,000 euros available from NLNet um, uh, to, to, for, for, for funding, uh, funding this, this um, thing. So, um, uh, and that filters and trickles through to all of the sub bugs that are allocated underneath it. So this is an occasion that there is actually funding available for this. Ooh. Oh, hey. Now let me go to this one and let's have a look. See source. Yeah. See dev and set up. Where is he installing it? Strange. Home source. Oh, ha ha. Well, it's gone put it in the wrong direction. Right? Burn down directory. But we'll sort that in a minute. Anyway, um, say so home source. Don't don't normally um, put things in home source. <laughs> um, Now um, the it does um, uh, as you can see here it's doing uh, uh, um, a recursive uh, submodule updates on that one that's the git submodule updates and things from here um, uh, that makes SV analysis and make PyWriter those are comp compilation of the, um, uh, uh, the we, we've got a compiler. In here, it it's actually um, uh, takes the pseudocode from the um, uh, from the actual um, uh, V3 spec and then uh, actually compiles it. So here's the page for LibreSocket.org, so open password ISA, and um, uh, then there, for example, there's um, some FP load instructions, the pseudocode for that, which was just been we've just added. Um, uh, um, uh, in the past few days, um, but this is how we do inst in the instructions. So basically, uh, we implement it in the Python-based simulator first, which is called um, uh, good. That's done. That's done. The Python-based simulator is called um, Isocaller, completely ineptly named, um, but it actually extracts the pseudocode from the V3 uh, uh, OpenPower spec, compiles it to um, uh, uh, to Python, and then of course you have executable pseudocode which um, uh, can run in a, a simulator, and then we can run all the unit tests under that. So, for example, um, uh, where is it? Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay, so um, here's an example of an SVV, SV simple V um, vectorized load LFSX. Um, uh, a better documented one is here. So um, let me just run that and see if it will work as it is. Um, source, geoparse, source, Python 3, open power, uh, decoder, ISA, test caller, 
SP64 FP Temp slash F uh, the, It's a hugely uh, verbose output So it was recommended that we do that Oh ha 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 um, Push D dot dot over the thing uh, Make file Make pi function writer I apologize I will make sure that's updated So bash Make pi function writer there we go. Show mouse. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, dots. Mm -hmm. There we go. Brilliant. Unit test one, two. Passed. Brilliant. Okay, so um, those units, um, those unit tests passed. Now you can you can do this with all of the tests in here. Find dots. Let me go back to the root one. It's a bigger, bigger um, screen here. Push the dot dot source. Uh, I say find dot minus name star test star dot py. Ah, so there's quite a lot of uh, uh, tests here. Let's let's run a, let's run another one. Um, um, so um, uh, Python three. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, uh, open power decoder ISA test caller dot py temps f so that we don't end up with a massive amount of debug information on the screen and then let's have a look at this one whilst that's running just leave that in the background ISA test underscore caller Right, yeah, here we go. Uh, so um, basically the way these unit tests work is you have um, uh, some uh, uh, you know, test underscore, the name function is a standard Python unit test. It lists the instructions that are going to be run and it runs them and then and then checks the, the results assert that are certain things. So in this case, um, uh, add immediate uh, um, 1234 into register three, uh, and put uh, 4321 into register 2, add 3, add uh, register 3 and 2 together, and put the result in register 1, and we expect the answer to put the gem in register 1 to be not as 5555, and so you can pretty much confirm that for yourself. Um, you know, uh, 1234 plus 4321 in, in hexadecimal is 5555. So these sort of basic level of, uh, of, of instructions, of, uh, which um, mean that. Um, uh, we can be confident that um, it's working at every every level. Um, at, here we're just testing the the simulator itself um, with the, you know the Python-based simulator. We're not actually testing the HDL, which is part of LibreSock thing. Oh ha ha ha! Yeah, that thing. Uh, I get to fix that bug. Deep joy. <laughs> I know what it is too. Uh, some changes recently that were made, so I'll, I'll sort that out. I'll sort it out by raising a bug. That's a good idea. Bug start label start dialog. New bug. First SOC. Trundle, trundle, trundle. Uh, bug in ISA cola unit tests found during demo video. That will do. Yeah, by default it's channel channel. It's assigned to me anyway, so I will deal with that later. That's just quite quite a good demonstration. So that's all you need to do. You know, if you find a bug like that, just raise the raise the thing and maybe in this particular case, I don't need to put any description of what's going on. That's got enough context, enough information for me uh, to for it to be investigated. Mm -hmm. So now let's move um, uh, on to uh, the um, uh, do, to do Yosis VHDL uh, tools Yosis um, because without that we can't do the compilation of the uh, and run the the HDL. 
um, you know, compiling to uh, Verilog um, and then synthesis to FPGA, etc., etc. So here, um, what we've done was we've uh, summarized um, uh, um, uh, some instructions online um, and added symbiosis as well, which is a form of correctness proof um, things. So just an HDL tools yosis run. Um, and off it goes. Because um, uh, we've got a nice powerful machine, what I'm also going to do is um, uh, run the second one. Um, Stev, CD, Mercy, RC, Dev and Setup. Um, I'm going to run the uh, PowerPC64 GDB GCC one as well, um, uh, which uh, unpacks the uh, GDB 8.3. Um, and compass it up. Now that's essential for um, uh, 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 yeah. So so it, that, that's essential for um, um, uh, to being able to run to compile the programs because it, um, it contains um, uh, bin utils um, uh, for for um, for, for um, uh, PowerPC and, and things. All right. So don't touch PPC, GDP, GCC. Ah, uh. uh. <laughs> can't run that. It's dull. Can't run that at the same time as you're unpacking stuff on on, on here. All right, so we do actually have to wait dull for the overlap because we've got an, an app get installed taking place here at the moment. So, yeah. Now. Um, a bit of thing. Oh yeah, um, mailing lists. Um, the LibreSoft bugs one, uh, the archives. It just contains um, uh, output from the bug tracker, so that that's archived. Um, you should not subscribe to that. Uh, so sorry, you can subscribe to it if you want to, um, but you should not post to it. Yeah. Um, the main one is uh, LibreSoft Dev, LibreSoft Dev archives, um, uh, thread. So um, this is the general description thing. So if you're um, uh, working on something, you should keep people informed um, uh, as to progress and what you're doing. Um, it's the main place where you ask questions, um, and also um, uh, uh, you know. We, we have uh, information about um, your conferences and etc 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 et et so you can generally keep up to date um, with the rest of the uh, rest of the developers um, uh, find out what they're doing um, we've also noted Psy that Freenode is uh, um, undergoing hostile takeover thing so we may have to move to a different uh, IRC server but again it will be um, whatever it was stock dot org slash irc logs irc log um, there we go so um, uh, uh, um, here, here you will see um, uh, uh, thing even the irc channel discussion is um, is uh, logs and then what you can do is you can take a copy of a link here and actually put it into one of the bug reports so um, <coughs> Um, uh, so that you can cross-reference the discussion. You can have a discussion on the IRC and then go back and cross-reference it into the bug tracker and uh, or to the main list, etc., etc., and um, be uh, confident that everything's uh, uh, cross-referenced. So let's see what our wonderful friends here are, here are doing. Take live latex extra is still installing. Snooze, snooze. Um, yeah, Yosis builds builds um, all its uh, manuals are in in LaTeX, so it uh, has to um, uh, install that as one of the build dependencies. Dum -dum -dum. Yeah. So that's the DevN scripts. Um, Here's the main SS, SOC repository, um, which uh, um, uh, uh, contains the actual uh, source code of the SOC itself. Our main focus in here 
uh, test uh, socks simple is something called the issuer test issuer um, this is a finite state machine so, and it's deliberately designed to be very very clear um, as to what's going on um, so there's no complex pipelining um, which um, uh, 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 which you know, it, it, in, in short, you can't you can't you can't you know, follow what's going on because you have to, to know about the details of the pipelines and things. Um, uh, so um, there are one, two, three, four, mm, five uh, finite state machines in in this uh, thing. For example, the one that handles uh, the TB and DEC SPR. Um, uh, it, it, that's those are responsible for um, uh, counters, some, uh, some system counters. So um, uh, starts off uh, initiate to initiating a, a read of DEC. When it's read, then the new value of DEC um, is uh, the old uh, current value minus one. Uh, it initiates a write, and then the next state uh, is move on to TB uh, read. TB is read, TB is incremented by one, TB is written, and the next state is, is decrement read, so it goes back round the loop, round, 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 round. Okay, it's it's, it's that kind of level of basic um, uh, uh, stuff um, uh, in, in there. So um, uh, it, it, all of these um, finite state machines are basically around that same principle, but it's where you get the interaction between them that gets a bit more uh, complex um, but we wanted to keep this dead simple because this is implementing SVP64 uh, including condition reg uh, including predication based on integer and condition registers and uh, uh, and more and we wanted it obvious at this very early stage of what's going on we'd be delighted if somebody wanted to turn this into a pipeline in order or a pipeline outer order executioned um, uh, 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 thing um, uh, at uh, at some point okay so that is uh, cloning there so now I should be able to run I think it's not doing oh ha ha uh, home now okay so source dot uh, source Jobs, vi dollars dev and set up uh, PVC GC paper thing. What does it say? Some CD home mocto thing. W get that. Thomas X reserves a thing. Uh, w get command not found. Apt get install. Ha uh, ha. Ha ha. It's one of the problems of having a a, a, a basic uh, shoot, um, a, a minimal shoot thing. Okay, now let's rerun that. thing. I will add that so that by the time you get to this, it won't. It will have w get in the um, things. In fact, I'm going to do that now. Um, let me drag a existing prompt uh, simply push D C dot dot slate dev and C dev and set up. Uh, which one was it? Um, uh, let's do in let's do it in both the PPC one app get installed first and w get so make sure we have that get pull get commit them minus m add uh, w get to pvc uh, to used in pvc 64 gdb gcc scripts pull get push CD dot dot yeah 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 uh, install install 
HDL app rex requests and we also want um, alumin opqrst uv vim get to make sure it's in there as well commit minus asm add wget to install hdl apt rex git push and so that when you run that you won't run into that error that uh, same error and off um, uh, that's going and building GDB GCC quite nicely. And in this one, we, it's building Yosis ABC. So let, let's let those uh, run in the background. What else can we tell you and talk about at the moment? So yes, this is the unit tests. That's test issuer. Now, um, yeah, test issue itself has its own um, uh, uh, unit test infrastructure, so its own test underscore issuer. And so this will be the this is the primary um, unit test which will run in a bit um, for uh, 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 running um, against the HDL. Now here, what it's doing is it's running. The ISA caller, which we previously tested with other unit tests and made sure that was working, it's now running a co-simulation of those same of, of some of those same unit tests against the HDL and doing a comparison after each instruction. If I look at test runner, test runner. It does a setup of memory um, uh, and uh, does a, a, a memory dump uh, and a register dump after every single instruction and then compares the two. Um, but also what it does is quite interesting. We've added a DMI interface, um, uh, 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 which is similar to, uh, sorry, identical to the one in Open Power. And we can actually use that DMI interface to start and stop the core and reset it. So we set it into single, single step mode, um, uh, and wait for wait for it everything, and then uh, and then do a, a check of the registers of the simulation versus the HDL, uh, the ISA caller um, uh, open power simulator versus the uh, core, and that way we can make sure that it's it's equal. Now. Also, we've got a way to do co-simulation of the ISA caller versus QEMU. So we can do single stepping of QEMU. <laughs> let me just uh, let me just find that. Open power simulator. There we go. All right, and we use the PyGDB MI Python GDB machine interface. To uh, um, to single uh, to fire up um, uh, an exec um, uh, QEMU. There we go. Um, uh, 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 and uh, a single step through it and actually run unit tests, <laughs> which um, we can, so we can run those same compile the binary binary and run the same unit test against the simulator. Uh, our Python-based simulator, as against QEMU, QEMU, and the same one against um, the HDL. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of funny, but what we're uh, also going to do is we're going to add Power Gem 5, and I really want Microwatt to be added as well, um, so that we can do co-simulation of, mic of Microwatt. Now, um, notice here, you can actually do a little test. Uh, you can uh, there is a make file uh, which you can run. Where is it? Where's the make file? <laughs> QM and Scott test. Here we go. Yeah. Um, so the uh, readme shows uh, shows you how, how to how to run that. Uh, it's a launch script. Q system PM thing. So you can actually run a, a very basic um, uh, program. Uh, there's the make file file for building the program. Here's the actual source code of the program. This is called to be compiled to a raw binary, all right? Not um, 
uh, uh, not an elf binary. Uh, it's very deliberate. That, that's still that's still going, and that's still going. So we'll leave that. We we'll leave those in the background. Uh, thing. Um, let's go back to the to 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 where were we? Where were we to to a test issue? Uh, simple test. test issuer and notice here that we're importing a whole stack of tests here now um, th this is the, the basis we've got all this infrastructure in place but on the basis of assumption that there's running software engineering practices so software engineering practices you um, you you you, um, um, uh, you you always use unit tests so um, a sock function unit. Let's go into the ALU here, and here's where you have the pipeline for the for the ALU. And the pipeline for the ALU is constructed from an input stage and a main stage. Here's the input stage, which derives from a common input stage. So it's sock fu. Common input stage. Here we go. And ah, oh, look, it's doing. Um, uh, uh, if it gets hold to, it does inversion of the um, uh, of the input uh, on, on register A. And if it gets told to do in, in, up to invert equals register B, it does that. Um, uh, and if there's uh, an XER carry input, um, it will select that from the incoming. Uh, 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 register data and um, if it's got sticky overflow then that will come into that pipeline stage as well back to ALU that's your input stage so it's derived and this is the format of the incoming registers and the outgoing specification for the registers for this pipeline ALU and let's have a look at the main stage okay main stage is where it gets quote interesting quotes all right. Um, so um, uh, here's the uh, some uh, convenience variables for inputs. Right. Uh, uh, we do a little trick here, which is if it's a compare operation, we'd, um, uh, we need we need to know if it's 32 bit or not. Um, uh, a bit of in, in uh, a bit, bit of things on the signed and unsigned um, when whether it's a, whether if operation is signed um, uh, and things and finally we get into the actual operations of, of what this pipeline covers and it covers compare comp add and add is a micro op which covers all the different ad operations and that's thanks to Paul McCarris and the team from MicroWatt that we discovered this trick um, where some pre-processing that input stage processing and a follow-up output stage processing will do all of ad, ad negative, ad carry, ad me, ad eq, blah blah blah, everything with the one op ad with some pre-processing and post-processing um, of inversion of the input or inversion of the output and dealing with overflow etc etc so it's all taken care of in a single um, uh, uh, micro op uh, ext uh, uh, sign extension you want to know if it's you know there's a different thing of whether it's um, uh, one byte two bytes or four bytes uh, sign extension and can be now that's it okay all right there's only comp add ext, ex, uh, sign extension and compete be eqb in this particular pipeline all right because it's we've grouped everything together that has similar register profiles okay now back to the snuck open power test ALU directory here we have the ALU cases so notice in here that in this test there are only add ext comp and comp EQB, um, the tests 
um, yeah, add s, add i, subfig uh, for everything, etc. So it's kept close comp, and so on. Right? That's 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 this unit test job. But it's the the crucial thing is that it is run against this pipeline. Okay. The first, the very first thing we do is we run it against this pipeline and this pipeline only. Okay. ALU test test pipe caller. Okay. All right. So this is the test uh, test pipe caller, and at the top of the test it imports those ALU test cases, and um, it manually chucks things into the pipeline. Uh, 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 things and then checks the output. So it does the, the, the thing. All right. The next thing that we need to do is to think is we have some, something with for computation units, comp units, comp units, test, test ALU comp, comp unit. And this is a wrapper around the pipeline where we use an, um, a system for, for, for managing the communication between the register file and the pipeline. And notice again, the exact same unit tests are, are used in this unit test and run against that pipeline, including its comp unit wrapper. But it is exactly the same tests. And then, finally, oh look, the exact same unit tests are run against the test issuer, which is where you actually get actual execution of actual binaries. So all the two previous tests, uh, we, we had the, um, uh, 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 it was running, um, uh, the two previous unit tests, we were, oh, the first one we were running the pipeline, the second one we were preparing to make sure that the comp unit worked with this based on the knowledge now that the pipeline gets the right answers. And now we're, for the thing in this one, we're confident that the pipeline with its communication with register files will get the right answer because we've tested that. And consequently, the uh, this unit, te this test here, we're, with all the pipelines having confidence that all the pipelines produce the right answers in communication with the register file, we can confidently actually then issue an instruction to those uh, 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 things, read from those register files, pass the answers to, to, to thing, and we're basically testing just the issuer part, the test, uh, the, the test issuer. Um, uh, execution uh, uh, thing, rather than going, oh my god, oh my god, we don't know whether the pipelines uh, thing, we've got an error, we've no idea whether it's the pipeline, the register files, uh, the computation units uh, thing, which one thing, uh, chaos, chaos, panic, panic. Um, no, that is not how you do things in software engineering. Um, you, 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 you do unit test upon unit test upon unit test upon unit test. It sounds boring, but my God, if you've ever had to debug something where you have no idea what's going on, uh, you'd be extremely grateful that you did this kind of thing. Okay. Shimon uh, was saying after HL tolls. Oh, ha ha. I know why that was. It's because I didn't do it as uh, a pseudo thing. But never mind. It should be all right. Um, Should do the trick. CD HDL tools, and uh, let's run Yosis. Yes, that's installed. Okay, all right, brilliant. And so was uh, well GDB. Mm. Ah, funny make info as in this installed. I have a thing that um, uh, should be all right. Apt get install make info. Um, you can tell I haven't done this one. So let's put that in. Out cache search make info. Get install tech i2 HTML. Let's verify that's PPC 64. Info. Uh, what 
is it? Um, tech. Tech I to HTML. Ha ah, ah, ha ah. ha, nothing. Clip is um, uh, Debian package. Uh, sorry, I'm off screen at the moment. Make info. Keyword searches for make info. I'm just off screen, sorry. You have search for paths that end with Mako in Sweet Buster. Tech info. Install tech info. Yes, tech info. It commits my same, my same, my same. And tech info to PPC64, GDB, GCC. Push. So when you run it, it will work for the thing, first time. Okay, all right. So um, let us sudo lcl su minus lcl cd dot cd source is now cd sock. Now let's um, Python three CD source sock Python three F U L U test test pipe caller. Let's run that unit test and see if that works. It did. If, uh, let's have a look. Hey, all right. So um, this is extremely debug, debug, uh, uh, verbose debug information, um, just the, uh, because you need it. Okay. So um, that was that ALU one I was telling you about. Okay. So that run um, ran. Excuse me. <coughs> now let's run the one three fu comp unit test test. LU compute temps as F. I run the tests. Behind the outputs. Error. No errors. Well, hey. So that was the one that uh, um, uh, uh, ran with the wrapper around the computation units, uh, around the thing for the communication to the register file. Um, F U. Um, no, it's very simple. Test test issuer dot py. Um, now what we're going to do is to make it to keep it shorter is we're going to comment out these things because they take quite a long time. Um, dum 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 dum, and we're just going to leave the ALU test cases. So on Python simple test test issuer dot py temp slash f. Dun, 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 dun. Ignore that, ignore that, ignore that completely. Da, 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 da. Not important. Snooze, 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 snooze. Yeah, it takes a while. Because it's actually running a, 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 running a full um, a full HDL. Dun, dun. Half. Read the address. Reading something it's doing in the next one. Where's it up to so far? Case one regression test. Case random immediates. Where 
is uh, where is the where's the unit tester that's actually running? Um, PWD CD dot dot CD uh, CD source power say and it's done. Hey, and it passed. Hey, all right. So let's reload. Let's find error. No, no errors. Brilliant. Okay, so um, it does a dump of the uh, the register files after each one. Case underscore compute QB. Let's have a look. VR uh, C tags. Have we got C tags? Brilliant. VI colon colon uh, colon tag case comp EQB. Boom. There we go. And um, here, which uh, is a bit small, that one, uh, we can see that. Um, uh, it's comparing register 1 to register 2 and putting a result into CR1. Um, and you can see the initial reg 1 of the GPRs is um, is 1. Uh, oh, this is uh, um, 5 equals 1 to 20. So why is it doing that? Why is it doing that when it's not random? I don't know. Normally we do this loop uh, like this when we put in random values, but actually, strictly speaking, it's not necessary there. So let's just do that. Um, we're not doing a series of random arbitrary values. We're just running one test. Um, I think get diff. I'll sort that out and commit that later. Yeah, um, I just uh, want to give you that um, introduction. Let's see what um, else we should do here. Uh, push t dot dot cd cd dev and setup. Um, yeah, if you want to uh, run against an FPGA, the one that we're supporting at the moment is the ECB5. Um, strongly re recommend you get the 85k lookup tables one, not the 45k. Um, and this will uh, automatically build the ECB5, uh, next PNI ECB5 tools with it, which relies on. Um, Yosis, um, uh, and that, that will get you started there. Um, uh, if you want to do the, eight, uh, the VLSI layout, we have one for installing um, Coriolis 2. That's quite a big task, and we strongly recommend that you install that in a completely new cheroot, which is why it's, it's it, the, the basis of this thing is that it actually does that. It sets up its own cheroot first, in, um, which will end up in Obshroot Coriolis. Um, again, this is where standardization is absolutely critical for replica builds. Um, the, uh, for the MESA 3D development, um, that's uh, for replication of the uh, uh, git.libresoft slash git slash MESA, uh, if you want to play with that and help with that. Um, yeah, I think we're good there. So, yeah. Thank you very much.